Hello everyone. My name is Gloria Kimonge from Arusha, Tanzania. It is an honor for me to have this opportunity to present to you about Swahili language, which we call it Kiswahili. And uh, it's one among the fastest growing language. And you'll see that Swahili is not difficult to learn at all. Um, yeah, and uh, here's my story. My love for languages began in the mid of 2008, where I joined French classes, and, uh, but I, never fin I couldn't finish because of the, I had some family issues which were forced me to go and live in the village at my grandma area, at my mother's land. But when I was there, I didn't have access to internet and I didn't have access, I didn't have the smartphone, so I couldn't be able to continue with French. But those who I studied with them, same class, now they are speaking a very good French and I'm so jealous of them. When I was working with, it, uh, with, with a Ministry of Natural Resources and Tourism, I worked since 2015 to 2017 for two years and uh, I was a game warden in which, um, as a game warden, we are holding gun and uh, uh, arresting poachers. Poachers are those people who are hunting illegally. They kill elephant, they kill rhino, and put them into endangered. So uh, my job was to, uh, to chasing them, but so I was like, uh, not only to chase, to arrest them. So uh, within a month, we could do 15 days patrolling just to make sure the area is safe. And I was working in the loose game reserve which is the largest game reserve, about 50,000 kilometers square. And uh, for there, when we were working, uh, this is one of my experience which made me also to not want to work longer. I knew someday I can kill or I can be killed because those poachers, they are holding gun and I'm holding a gun. And, uh, and I knew that maybe in case of defense, I can kill or, or maybe the poachers, they may defend themselves and kill me. I was like, maybe this, uh, it's somewhat dangerous, but it's beautiful to protect wildlife. It's beautiful to, pr to protect the elephant. And I wanted to do all those, but this one experience also changed my mind. One time we caught people fishing inside the park and fishing is not allowed. Even to enter inside the park without permission is not allowed. So when they were inside the park, when they were, uh, they were doing fishing, some of my colleagues, because they work for years more than me, they were telling them like, you mze, you have been poaching inside the park and we caught you several times. This time we are not going to uh, to let you go easily because normally you pay peanuts and you go. And I was like concerning why is he keep doing the same thing? And then later on I went and asked him why are you doing poaching? Why do you kill animals? Uh, why do you do like involving in activities like fishing inside the park? I knew that he, he was not caught for killing elephant, but at least just enter the park it was, not, it was like already broken the rules. And he told me like uh, I have to feed my family. I'm selling fish to feed my family. I am taking care of my children, sending them to school. And I was concerning because looking outside the park, looking outside the Lugan Reserve, there is less to, to get income. So I was like, maybe I want to provide conservation education, uh, educate people instead of arresting them. And uh, maybe some of them, they have to do that. Even looking at uh, like those people who are doing like ivory, those who are killing elephant, most of them, when you cut them, their life is very poor. And I'm like, maybe they're used. Maybe they're not benefited with what they do with poaching. And uh, I really wanted to change my job. And I decided to register my own tour company, which is called Glorious Tanzania Tours Limited. So with Glorious Tanzania Tours Limited, I registered in 2017 and it started operating mostly in 2018 till now. This year, 2020, because of COVID, there is no tourists, there is no business, and I had so much cancellation from the client who booked already, and it was so stressful time this year, and I was so afraid. I said, maybe I chose the wrong career, and then I was looking online, what else could I do, and then I find iTalk. So after I found iTalk, I didn't know it could change my life. I've started, it is like three months already, and I've already taught over 300 lessons. I can't believe, I can't imagine. So it's a world life changing, and I'm, I'm able to meet different people. And uh, it's very motivation. Some, some students, they speak over eight languages, and uh, it's a very good experience. And combining with my experience as a, as a Swahili speaker, but also 
uh, knowing about the country, knowing about the culture, knowing about uh, about the language and the uh, yeah, life of people, the lifestyle. It is always good to share with a student in ITOC and, uh, and it's the best opportunity for me. And today I'm able to present this language. I'm grateful for the opportunity which I have and I'm going to share with you where is Tanzania. So Tanzania is among East Africa country and we are surrounded by different country. We are surrounded, there is in North, there is Kenya, there is Uganda, but also uh, Ethiopia, you can see also South Somalia, but also we are surrounded by in South, Mozambique, Malawi, and um, also Congo in the West, uh, Rwanda, Burundi, and uh, yeah, Tanzania is also, it's a union between two country, uh, Zanzibar, which is now the uh, Tanzania island. So Zanzibar and then Tanzania mainland, which is Tanganyika. So it's a union between Tanganyika and Zanzibar and it formed the name Tanzania. And that happened in 1964. So Zanzibar got its independence in 1963 and the, uh, Tanganyika got its independence in 1961. So both of ours, we get un the union, happening in 26 April 1964 and became with Tanzania, Tanzania. Talking about Tanzania, you can't escape to mention Zanzibar Island and mainland Tanzania. Both of them are very unique in different way and culture. For example, in Zanzibar, there is high population of Islamic and mainland also is more and is more full in terms of resources. As you know, uh, Tanzanite resources or Tanzanite mineral is found only in Tanzania. And also, as you know, Kilimanjaro mountain is also the highest mountain in Africa. It's found here in Tanzania. And uh, Serengeti, the famous national park, uh, it's here in Gorongoro conservation area. Uh, but all those is just some. We, we have over 16 national park and different tribes and all tribes are very unique and we have over 120 tribes in different language. We, they speak different tribes, languages, and uh, we are all united with Swahili. Uh, Swahili is our national language. We have uh, also English as official language, so we, have both, we are using both English and Swahili. And our president, our first president, Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere, emphasized the use of Swahili because he knew that that's the only way of getting united. Uh, even though we have so many tribes, we don't have problem with tribalism in Tanzania. We have good government and it was managed well ever since. And Swahili contributed so much to unite all of us because we, and we don't have that problem with tribalism. So coming to, the, uh, to Zanzibar, as I, as I said earlier, like it's more beautiful. It's dominated also with the island. The beach is incredible. You, you want to visit Zanzibar for sure and you will be able to learn about the slave trade because that was the center of the of the trade, especially the slave, uh, and also ivory, and also cloves. As we know, this is a, Zanzibar is like the spice island. Zanzibar is a, is a spice is known as the spiced island. Cloves makes it very famous. Uh, the Portuguese, the Arabs, British, and German, they all contributed, they all influenced this beautiful language, Swahili. And I'll share with you how they influenced some Swahili language words which we are still using. The Portuguese, when they're spreading Christianity, they use also Swahili to spread the Christianity. And the Arabs, when they came also, Arabs stayed longer, they had settlement, they, they were much intermarriage with the people, and uh, with intermarriage also people learned Arabs and they were teaching Arabic uh, language, the madrasa, they were teaching the, the classes, the religion education through Swahili. So this is why some people think Swahili, it's, it's Arabs because it has more influence of Swahili and we have more uh, Arabs words. And uh, if you go to Zanzibar, you will see for sure the buildings of Portuguese, the, the structure, the culture, how it was influenced. All oh, when they, the, this interaction or the contact between people of the Middle East and Far East affected us in terms of the languages, dressing style, not only uh, dressing style, but also the way, the culture in general. So we still the building, the vivid building style of the Arabs and the building style of the Portuguese, they're all vivid. When German came, uh, to, to the, they found out like they didn't want to involve themselves much in in um, in Swahili because they were afraid that Swahili language it's already much influenced with Arabs, so they taught German language. So uh, German language came into the, it was adapted. When the British came, they allowed Swahili to be used 
in a lower level education. In high level, it was English. And this is a form of education which we are used until now. So we learn much Swahili in a lower level. And uh, in high school, we learn English. In This is why most of Tanzania also, we don't speak good English. We speak but excellent Swahili. If you want uh, to learn Swahili, the Tanzania is the best spot for Swahili, but it not the best English for majority because like we learn in our system, we learn much in primary level Swahili and then in a high school we learn English. When British introduced that, it uh, somehow it undermined Swahili because people thought English is a language of educated people and not everybody gets to to, to high education, so not everybody gets opportunity to learn English. So I'm going to prove to you some Swahili, borrowed some words from the other language, the Portuguese word, meza. Meza, meza is a table, meza, meza. So another Portuguese word is gereza, gereza. Gereza is a prison and we still use it. And mvinho, mvinho, mvinho is wine. And we have leso, leso, handkerchief. Some of the Arabs words are shikamo, shikamo, which this is very respective when we still use it. Shikamo, it's a greeting and it's very respective greetings. It's a form of greetings. We told we only people who are elder than, older than us. Like my sister, shikamo dada, which is the sister. My mother, shikamo mama. My father, shikamo baba but also shikamo babu, grandfather, shikamo bibi, grandmother. When a person tells us shikamo, we respond marahaba. Marahaba also it's more to showing the respect back, marahaba. So this is all the people who we greet, they respond like that. And we have also another word which is Arab madrasa. Madrasa or darasa, it's a class. Madrasa is plural, but we used to say darasa is it's a class, darasa. We have another word, it's sharia, sharia. Sharia means law, law, so sharia. This is also Arabic word. Another one is mwalimu. Mwalimu, as I said, our first president, mwalimu Julius Kambaragi Nyerere. Mwalimu means teacher, so and we still use it. We call him mwalimu for the respect which he had and uh, to let country into independent, to independence and also help most of the African country to get their independence. So he's one of the, the leader which we are most proud of. German language, I'll say, just say few only, which we are still using, Schule. Schule. Schule means school. This is German word, Schule. And also we have Pesa. Pesa means money. Pesa. Pesa. And British, we have a few more. For example, Penseli. Penseli. Penseli is a pencil. Penseli. Another one is television, 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 so television. And picture, picture, a picture, but also camera. Camera, we just write K, but also it's British, we still you say camera. So just, uh, those are just few. I'll share some of the another words, which is uh, Hakuna Matata. Everybody knows about Hakuna Matata. So hakuna matata means there is no worries. Not no worries, but there is no worries. Hakuna matata. What makes it no worries? It's just H-A, ha, ha. That makes it no. And we'll see how we, we, we negate most of things by just putting ha. So hakuna matata, which is no worries, if we, we take out H-A, it will be kuna matata. Kuna matata means there are worries. Kuna matata. Let's see other way we can use, for example, kuna chakula. There is food. Kuna chakula. There is food. Kuna chakula. What if we want to say hakuna chakula? There is no food. Hakuna chakula. There is no food. And then another one, kuna shule. As we said, shule means school, and it's a German word, shule. So if you say kuna shule, means there is school. Kuna shule. And Hakuna shule, there is no school. Hakuna shule, there is no school. Kuna daktari, daktari, a doctor. Kuna daktari, there is a doctor. Kuna daktari, what if you want to say there is no doctor? Hakuna daktari, there is no doctor. Kuna darasa, there is a class. 
Kuna darasa. There is a class. Hakuna darasa. There is no class. Hakuna darasa. There is no class. Kuna hela. Money. Kuna hela. There is money. Hakuna hela. There is no money. Hakuna hela. There is no money. And we come again to the personal pronouns. And the personal pronouns, we have several others, like we say mimi, which is I. Mimi, M-I-M-I, -M -I. Mimi, I, or me. Wewe, you, wewe, you. C-C, we, C-C, we. Ye, ye, he or she, ye, ye, he or she. Wow, they, wow, they. And nini is you plural, nini. So I want to say I am glory, just mimi, Ni glory. So if you use ni, which is n i, means am, um, we can also use as is and also are. So me, me, ni glory. I am glory. But also we have, we can negate it and use s i, like si. Si is not. I know in Spanish people say si means yes, but this si in Swahili means not. If I want to say I am not a teacher, I'll say, Mimi si mwalimu. Remember mwalimu, our first president means teacher. Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere, teacher, mwalimu. So mimi si mwalimu. I'm not a teacher, but because I am a teacher, a Swahili teacher, I'll say mimi ni mwalimu. I am a teacher. Mimi ni mwalimu. Si si ni walimu. When it is plural, we put W-A, walimu, walimu. Sisi ni walimu, we are teachers. And then we can say, Sisi si walimu, we are not teachers. Sisi si walimu. And wewe ni Rafiki. Rafiki from Lion King. Rafiki, a friend, right? Rafiki. Mimi ni Rafiki. I am a friend. If I'm not a friend, I can say, Mimi si Rafiki. Mimi si Rafiki. <laughs> so it's good to say, Mimi ni Rafiki, I am a friend. And then we have wow, which is they, wow. Wow ni wanafunzi. Mwanafunzi, it's one, when it's one student, mwanafunzi. But now there are many, I will use wanafunzi, students. Wanafunzi, and singular, mwanafunzi. So sisi ni wanafunzi, we are students. And maybe you want to say we are not students. Sisi si wanafunzi. We are not students. Nini ni marafiki. Ma, it's plural for friend. Nini ni marafiki. You are friends. Friends. Nini ni marafiki. Then you're not friends. Nini si marafiki. Nini si marafiki. Greetings. Uh, greetings is a very important part in Swahili. Because when people greet each other here, they'll stop and be concerning and ask each other, how are you, how did you sleep, how is the family, how is the mother, and they're concerning. So it's not like hello and just pass. People here sometimes, people they say that we are so pole pole, slow, we are very slow. And if this uh, slogan started pole pole, it started in Tanzania or maybe in Africa for sure, yes. Because pole pole means slowly. When people climb Kilimanjaro, they also say pole pole. Pole pole means slowly, slowly. But pole pole, people think like we are very slow because when we greet each other, we take slow. If the people, they say no hurry in Africa, it's definitely applicable in Tanzania. Uh, if you arrange to, to meet with a person at nine, you better tell him, let's meet at eight because we'll definitely come at nine or later. So very, time, very poor time management. But things change and people who are doing tourism, they're very efficient. Uh, people who are doing uh, office work, they're very efficient. So, but still, it has to change slowly, slowly. And so, uh, no hurry in Africa. Ha hakuna, hakuna haraka Africa. No hurry in Africa. Hakuna haraka Africa. Haraka means hurry. How we introduce ourselves? I can easily say, Mimi ni glory. I am glory, as I said. Mimi ni glory. But we have another way to say, like, Nina itwa. Nina itwa glory. I am called glory. Or I can say, Jina langu ni glory. My name is glory. Jina langu 
ni glory. Nina itwa glory. Mimi ni glory. And when people they ask me what is your name, they'll say Gina Lako Nani. Sometimes we use J, which is at the beginning if you don't want to make that sounds because it's Swahili pronunciation are not difficult. So we say Gina Lako Nani, what is your name? Gina Lako Nani, what is your name? So we have that nani wu. Yeah. Gina Lako Nani, what is your name? Una itwa nani. If a person tell you una itwa nani, you can say Nina itwa. You would say your name. Gina lako nani, what is your name? Gina langu glory. But if they ask una itwa nani, I'll say Nina itwa glory. But if they ask me wewe ni nani, as we know wewe means you. Wewe ni nani, who are you? Wewe ni nani, I can say mimi ni glory. Wewe ni nani, mimi ni glory. If I'm not glory, I can say mimi si glory. Mimi ni mwalimu wa Kiswahili. I am Swahili teacher. Mimi ni mwalimu wa Kiswahili. I am Swahili teacher. Okay. Now I want to, to encourage you to learn Swahili because it's not so difficult. And also the present Swahili, if you learn, you'll definitely use it because it's used in different assembly. For example, assembly meeting like SADC. You, you like to listen in BBC Swahili. Also, it's helping a lot. It's, it's in expansion of this language. Voice of America, um, definitely able to also to use Swahili. It's used the radio of Japan, um, India, China, uh, France, international uh, Germany, Deutsche Welle, uh, Russia radio, and they're all contributing to the expansion of Swahili. If you learn Swahili, you will definitely be able to use it. Uh, the international business area like New York, Moscow, and uh, London, and uh, you may f possibly find people who are speaking Swahili. Now, currently, people are speaking Swahili. They are almost everywhere, so you'll get friends to practice with them. And also, Swahili is used with the United Nations, like UNESCO, UNHCR, and also UNICEF. And um, the East Africa community, so Swahili is widely used and uh, y you will definitely find uh, useful when you start and I encourage you to learn with me also through italki. Asante sana, thank you very much. Asante means thank you, so if you want to say thank you very much, I just add sana, very much, sana. Asante is thank you. Asante sana, thank you very much. And then, karibu, karibu means welcome. Karibu, welcome. Karibu sana, you're very welcome. Karibu Tanzania, welcome to Tanzania. Karibu Tanzania, welcome to Tanzania. Thank you for listening, thank you very much. Asante sana, and kwaheri, goodbye. Kwaheri, goodbye, and good luck for everything. Asante sana, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.